Today's cardinal lesson is about assisted living, home health care, and nursing homes and planning for them, and really the consequences of not being prepared for a crisis or a long-term care crisis really fall on your family, your children, your spouse, your brothers and sisters, anybody that's going to come to your aid in a crisis, if there hasn't been planning for this thing, it's a real mess. We do a lot of crisis planning here at Cardinal. Now, what I want to talk to you about is assisted living, home health care, and nursing home, and what we can do to plan for the cost of this. So the first category that I mentioned in my book and my workbook is traditional long-term care. And this is what people think about when they think about long-term care. Whether it's positive or negative, they're thinking of traditional long-term care insurance. And one of the downsides of traditional long-term care insurance is if you pay premium for all these years and then you pass away and you didn't use it or you didn't use it much, that's all lost. And in reality, that went to pay the claims of the people that used and got a lot more out of it than they paid into it. Um, the premiums are expensive by the month and by the year. And they also have historically, they've gone up substantially and so you have the fear of that and this is to some degree given traditional long-term care a bad name and then you've got full health questions so they're going to look you over from head to toe the insurance company is before they let you accept it all that being said this is really the least money down or the least expensive to get you a good plan for several hundred thousand dollars worth of protection for long-term care now, the second category is short-term care insurance. And short-term care, this may be the first time you've ever heard of this, um, this is a policy that is easier to qualify for. So we have a lot of people that can't get this, that are able to get this, and they're real happy and real glad that they have it. And what it really does is it puts a year between you paying for bills immediately and paying for them to start paying for them in a year. So, I mean, that's a that's a limited coverage plan, but I can just tell you from ex personal experience with clients is that people that need home health care, they need assisted living, or they need nursing home, and they now have a year's worth of coverage before they have to start winding down their savings. They're very thrilled that they have this. It is less expensive because it only covers a year, and as I said, it's easier to qualify. And the next category that we talk about is hybrid long-term care insurance. And hybrid long-term care, I mean, the word hybrid is putting together two things. And what this is doing is taking a life insurance policy or an annuity and matching it up with a long-term care policy. So it, it, it serves two benefits for you. So, you know, what, what that means is that you pay a premium, many times a single premium, you just pay a lump sum of money or you transfer your assets. Um, sometimes it's an annual premium for a number of years, but regardless, th this type of insurance is going to pay either you for long-term care or your estate or your children and your family after you pass away. So it, it really kind of counters this thing where one way or another, either your estate or you are going to get the benefits out of this. Now, it is expensive in the sense that, because you're buying long-term care insurance and life insurance, but the net cost of it can be substantially less because you're, you're guaranteed to get a benefit out of it. Um, it. You know, when I say in between health questions, so it's harder than this to qualify for, um, you know, th th this is going to have the easiest health questions this is going to be a little bit harder, but this is going to be easier to qualify for than this. And we even have some, some hybrid long-term care plans that if the folks are willing to transfer a lump of money, you can have some people with some pretty serious health conditions that are still able to get long-term care insurance and put together a plan. And the fourth category is self-insurance. And so what we're talking about with self-insurance, a lot of folks think they're self-insured, where they're just using that as an excuse to get rid of somebody like me that offers long-term care insurance. They say, oh, I'm self-insured. Well, what we're talking about here is actually having a plan so that if you do get sick, 
your family is going to know which accounts to draw the money from, they're going to have legal documents in place, they're going to know what your preferences for care, whether you want to be cared at home or you whether you want to be in an assisted living facility. All this stuff is going to be written down so when your family is making decisions. We also have tax implications of this, is, is that the cost of care is deductible. So we, we need to make sure that we have corresponding income and deductions. So, and obviously there's no health questions. There's, there's some people that are not able to qualify health-wise for any of these things. And then th we end up here by default, where now we're gonna sit down and put together an actual plan so that when this happens to them, it's all taken care of. Now, all four of these can be mixed and matched in the financial planning that we do. We have people do that quite a bit. So, this is how you find us on the web. Uh, at cardinalguide.com. This is our phone number. I'm Hans Scheil, and I thank you very much for listening.